Speaker, on this Natural Health Products Week, I'm pleased to welcome President Helen Long and delegates to Ottawa and wish them continued success in building healthy Canadians through high-quality natural health products. The worst drugs, such as heroin, have a terrible impact on our communities and destroy lives. These drugs also cause serious harm to public health and public safety. Mr. Speaker, this government is committed to preventing drug use and breaking the cycle of drug addiction. Mr. Speaker, many Canadians are shocked that law societies across the country voted to discriminate against Trinity Western University law graduates. Compounding the alarm is the revelation that it's big banks and big money interests led by the Bank of Montreal that influence the law societies. Mr. Speaker, Canadians expect our banks and our leading corporations to respect the charter rights and freedoms of all Canadians. We call on the BMO and its recruits from Corporate Canada to reverse this misguided initiative. I think we could probably thank God it was as, uh, you know, turned out as well as it did, and all of our security forces for the roles they played. We're determined we have to go on with our way of life and protect our institutions. That's what our national anthem is all about, standing on guard for Canada. And I think the generation that went before us, who went off to, to deal with with threats to world peace and to freedom. They did their part and sadly we have to do ours now. Mr. Speaker, 700 years before his birth, the prophet Isaiah declared a virgin would conceive and bring forth a son, that his name would be called Emmanuel, God with us. 500 years before it happened, Micah declared he'd be born in Bethlehem. While Zechariah wrote that he'd arrive in Jerusalem as a king, riding on a donkey. Indeed, all of history is divided by his time on earth. The Bible is his story. It remains the most published and influential literature of all time. While 2,000 years have passed, his life, his mission, his resurrection continue to impact lives around the world. Mr. Speaker, he is the reason for the season. I wish all members of the House, indeed all Canadians, and as many as can receive it, his peace that passes understanding. Merry Christmas. Well, there you were, and here you are. Thank you so much for being with me in studio, Mr. Lunny. So. How, Great pleasure to be here. How does it feel to be on the other side of 15 years of service as a member of Parliament? Well, it's, uh, it was a great privilege to represent uh, my riding, a beautiful part of Canada, and the, uh, the great people on Vancouver Island, and, uh, and to, to uh, serve in the role of a member of Parliament. But it's a very, very difficult uh, engagement anymore for a lot of reasons, but it's certainly, uh, it's certainly a trying time for people at any level of political engagement. People have made up their mind on information or disinformation, and only a small percentage of the population is movable in an election because they've made up their minds. And this, the world is so complex today. Mm -hmm. It's an information age, disinformation age, and we all suffer from that consequence. And the respect for the institutions is at an all-time low. Wow. So let's talk about 2019. Now, during your time in office, 2000, 2015, there were so many issues were, that were at play. But one of the issues I know that began to really emerge near the end of, of your service was the whole issue of freedom of religion, freedom of conscience. You were super involved with uh, Canada's role with Israel. Uh, as we go towards this election, what do you see as being the key issues that Canadians should have on their radar? Well, that issue hasn't gone away. In fact, it's only got worse in terms of freedom of religion and conscience. And I think people should be thinking about the very serious implications uh, of uh, where we're headed uh, in terms of suppressing people's, uh, these are fundamental freedoms, religion and conscience. Uh, you know, there's other issues that they're not talking enough about. That scandal, uh, the SNC-Lavalin thing that was exposed and the implications of that because it's an, really an outrageous abusive process and the way they were planning to use the deferred prosecution agreement, especially in this case with what a company that appears to be a serial offender. Uh, and there's more can be said about that, obviously. But of course, then, I, then there's uh, the whole state of the world uh, and, and out of control federal spending at a time when there's global instability in the financial markets. And it looks like there's tremendous difficulty on the horizon for the whole world. And Canada is likely very much at risk of getting drawn into a global recession. Uh, so we have serious issues to deal with that, uh, the debt, uh, out of control spending, freedom of religion and conscience, freedom of speech. When they're asking the, uh, you know, uh, Facebook and the major social media platforms to edit and decide what's acceptable speech and what isn't, there's very serious implications. We're, we don't really do much censorship in Canada on anything, mm -hmm. but they're asking the social media to decide what's acceptable speech and what isn't. Mm -hmm. So those are very serious issues that are on the horizon here, uh, as well as issues like resource development that aren't being talked about enough in the election. Okay.
Yeah, we've definitely walked off of our map on, on a lot of these frontiers, especially the social media aspect. I want to just double back to the comment you just made about SNC Lavalin because, you know, Andrew Scheer came out pretty strong saying that he was concerned that the Liberal Party was not, or the Prime Minister's Office was not participating, not cooperating with the RCMP. What do you make of that whole scenario? Well, uh, you know, the concerted effort to encourage the Attorney General today, Jody Wilson-Raybould, to reconsider her decision uh, on whether to go ahead with a prosecution uh, for some pretty egregious uh, offenses to our laws uh, with the no pressure, Jody. Uh, you know, when this company had hired no, uh, no less than the former uh, uh, clerk of the Privy Council, uh, Kevin Lynch is the CEO of SNC Levels. So they thought they thought they thought they had their prosecution wrapped up in a get out of jail free card, really, by having the former clerk of the entire federal government uh, as their CEO, a man who can call up Michael Wernick uh, directly and have access to him. And then their legal legal counsel was a former Supreme Court justice. And I think Canadians that have grown up with uh, you know, a sense of Canada is based on the rule of law and the independence of the judiciary from the political class, that the implications of no less than four Supreme Court justices being courted on behalf of SNC-Lavalin, while Mr. Trudeau and Jerry Biggs were pressuring Jody Wilson-Raybould to consider someone uh, outside legal advice to help her get the right decision. Very serious implications. And I think that, you know, if a company cheats, underbids their, uh, their opponents, uh, by, you know, bribing officials that most Canadians, and I think even many Liberal supporters, are offended by the fact that Canada is not a banana republic. We thought we were governed by the rule of law. So the credibility of our courts, the, uh, the abuse of, of process, uh, the, and the cavalier manner that the, uh, the government of the day has managed that is something Canadians should be thinking about and talking about because there are very serious implications for how business is done in our country. Wow. So now let's, let's zero in quickly on the, what you said over there about the freedom of conscience, freedom of religion conversation. You know, it really began to boil up during the final years of your service. Uh, the current justice minister came out in, I believe it was in August, and said that they were making it a priority to criminalize something called conversion therapy and that they would specifically be going after charitable status of churches and ministries. And it, it would sound like criminalizing conversations, even maybe with parents, pastors, and children, people that they're interfacing with around areas of uh, the area of sexuality. Do you think this is a real threat, a real thing that could happen where they would go after charitable status? Well, it's astounding. And there are parliamentarians around the world concerned about this type of dynamic. But Canada is, uh, it's unbelievable, the acceleration of repression of religious belief and, and faith. Uh, with Starting with doctors who are, don't want to participate in uh, abortion or referring for abortion or for, for uh, conscience matters uh, like death, uh, being told perhaps they shouldn't be a family physician. That's the Ontario College of Physicians and Surgeons applying. That would be an outrageous uh, offense. And then lawyers actually deciding that a graduate from a law, a law school that's approved by a province, a small Christian law school with 55 graduates, just tell them they can't practice in your province. Mm -hmm. That's an outrageous uh, attack on, on, uh, on the rights of, of, of people because they graduate from a, a law school with a Christian basis. So, uh, you know, when you're talking now about parental rights and, and what's good for your own child, to be shut out from a debate on, on what's good for your own child when they're confused about very complex issues about their sexuality, for example, and then for the legislation to come in that would legal, uh, you know, make it illegal to even talk to people going through a crisis of identity in their future, even from legitimate psychologists or counselors that would basically, uh, or from a Christian perspective, uh, basically make the Bible illegal mm -hmm. wow. if we follow that, uh, that course. Mm -hmm. And I think this, this, the implications are outrageous. Wow. And uh, I know with several issues on the social frontiers, there have been different things that have happened that people said would never happen. <laughs> I know even in my short time of tracking these things. And so it's definitely a time to be awake and alert. So we're going to go to a break here in a moment. But after that, I want to talk about what people can do practically in the last few days that we have here uh, to make a difference and whether or not people can actually make a difference. Does one vo voice, one vote, one person make a difference? So we're going to talk about that right after this.